Now those Pentecostals here know that there are other powers as well we associate with the Holy Ghost, the, the gifts of the Spirit that can come upon his consecrated servants to give them power to take on diseases, to take on devils, even to take on dysfunctional church folks sometimes with knowledge and words and abilities that do not come from inside of them, but rather come down from God himself to help us destroy the works of hell and build up the kingdom of our Lord. Power to preach words that can pierce right through a calloused heart and bring a hardened sinner to a place of repentance. Power to teach the word of God with such an anointing that it can penetrate into a mind wrapped in thick layers of humanism and even atheism and plant a seed of the gospel where no one thought it could ever be planted. Power to lay hands on a person eaten up with cancer and see them leave the hospital with a good report from the doctor. Power to spot a wolf dressed up in the most convincing set of sheep's clothing. Power to have great faith, to believe God when everyone else has lost hope. Do you have all the power that you need? In closing, I want to go back to that sermon of Pageant Robinson and just give you one more thing he said about Pentecostal power. I left this one out when I read it to you. He said, Pentecost is the power not only to bring lost men to heaven, but to bring, it's the power to bring heaven down to lost men. It's not just the power to bring lost men to heaven, but the power to bring heaven down to lost men. I'm praying for heaven to come down here this morning. Brother Robinson closed his message with a clear reference back to the opening verse of Acts. He said, Pentecost gives power to perpetuate all that Jesus both began to do and to teach until he comes again. Guess what? Jesus hasn't come back yet. And so that means this power is still available to you and to me if we want it. Do you have all this power operating in your life? Do you have all the power that you need. We're going to close this sermon and this service with a congregational prayer. The power of Pentecost, the power of the Holy Spirit doesn't have to meet you just at one place. The power of the Holy Spirit can meet you right where you are. And we're going to have a congregational prayer in just a few moments. And I'm going to ask Sister Betty Wright to lead us in this prayer. But let me address three different groups of people very briefly. First, if you're not a Christian. If you've never said, Lord Jesus, you're the Son of God, you're the only Savior, I'm a sinner and I need saving. Come into my heart, forgive my sins, live in me, change me, transform me, make me more like you. That's all it means to become a Christian. And that Holy Spirit will come and form the thinking and the life of the Lord Jesus in your heart. If you're not a Christian, the Holy Spirit is with you in convicting power. That's what's drawing you is the Holy Spirit of God. The Lord wants to save you. The Lord wants fellowship with you. The Lord wants to get your, get your life in order for him. For those of you who are saved, who do know the Lord, I just want to remind you that he's in you with sanctifying power. That doesn't mean you've allowed him to sanctify you. It just means he's in you with that power. What did Jesus say about sending a comforter? Just before it, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you want that power, that victory you've been hearing about this morning to characterize your life, then what you need to do is get in the Word, obey the Word, ask the Lord to have His way, give your life over to Him, and that power in you will manifest itself and will transform you. What about those who are saved and know the Lord with that sanctifying power? 
and you want your life to matter, you're hungry to be an effective witness. Acts chapter 2 shows us that he desires to come upon you with supernatural ministry power. What do you have to do? The scripture says very simply, ask. Ask. 